Hello. Hi, I'm Mr. Warner. Uh, let's talk about forced pairs, folks. Um, forced pairs are a are a topic, concept, uh, phenomenon associated with Newton's third law, and we can demonstrate that by looking at the forces acting on each part of this system. All right, this system being Earth man, the Earth man system. All right, now typically when we draw, you know, we started here earlier today where we said, oh, there's a situation with a person pushing on a crate, and we drew a free body diagram for the crate, and then we said, well, on the crate there are, um, well, there's this gravitational force, and there's this normal force. There's this applied force and there's this frictional force. Those are the forces acting on the crate. But what we said is, well, that's a force acting on the crate. Like, for example, this normal force acts on the crate, but it's exerted by the earth. This gravitational force is exerted on the crate, exerted by the earth. There's an applied force exerted on the crate exerted, whoops, by the man. Frictional force exerted on the crate by the earth. So every force, right, is an interaction between two objects. Objects don't have force. Nothing has force. Objects have things like mass or um, um, temperature, right? But they don't have force. Forces have to be uh, the manifestation of the interaction between two objects. Okay, and Newton's third law says that when objects interact, which is to say when they exert forces on each other. They exert forces that are equal and opposite. You've heard for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, what that means is for every force that one object, that one object exerts on another, well, that other one exerts an equal and opposite force back on the first. Okay, and we call those force pairs, right? So force pairs um, are um, equal and opposite forces of the same type that objects exert on each other when they interact. Sure. And so every force has what I call a force pair part. And for every force, the, its force pair partner must be one equal to opposite and three the same force, uh, the same kind of force. So what's equal about them? Their magnitudes, the size of the force. What's opposite? They point in opposite directions. And the same kind of force? Well, I mean weight, applied, normal, tension, friction, other ones that we'll come up with later. They have to be the same, right? Like, uh, like uh, well, it could be, for example, isn't how annoying are these things? It could be, for example, like, um, like, uh, like, um, how about a normal that 
exerted on one by two and a normal exerted on two by one. There's a force pair. What they can't be? Well, they can't be different magnitude. I mean, duh. They can't be uh, <laughs> not opposite direction. And they can't be different kinds of forces. And the big one, I'm going to, if I remember, I got to try to remember. There's a certain example that you can't have, but people always want to have. So how do I remember to come back? I'll do my best. So let's look at this, back to this earth man system. Earth person. Let's get, let's get modern people. Earth person system. Now here, we're not turning the person into an astronaut. We're not putting the person in orbit. We're just separating the object so we can draw a free body diagram for each. So here, let's assume the object is still, the person is still on the Earth. We're just assume a person is still on Earth. We're just spatial, we're just separating them so we can draw a free body diagram for each one. Okay, so uh, free body diagram, forces acting on the person. Well, one is this, F, gravitation. Gravitational force exerted on person by Earth. Two is a normal force exerted on person by Earth. I'm using this notation force that acts on and exerted by. Subscript, subscript. Okay? All right, so the Earth, well, all we really have to do is say, well, gee, look, here's person and Earth interacting, and that's the force exerted on the person. Well, that must mean that there's also a force of that same type that's equal and opposite that's exerted on the Earth by the person, right? This is on the person by the Earth. There must be on the Earth by the person. So that force is equal and opposite. It looks like this. I'm not trying to make it the radius of the Earth. That doesn't matter. I'm trying to make it the same size as this. And this is a gravitational force exerted um, on the Earth by the person. It, yes, you are pulling the Earth toward you. The Earth pulls you towards it. Well, by definition, you pull the Earth toward you. And there's also a normal force on the Earth exerted by you. Right, so the force pairs here are normal Earth person and normal Earth person, I mean person Earth. And that's one force pair. The second force pair is a gravitational force, Earth person gravitational force, person Earth. Same kinds of forces. Notice, this gravitational force points towards the center of the Earth. This gravitational force points away from the center of the Earth. This normal force points, I don't know, let's say, away from the surface of the Earth. Well, this one points away from the surface of the Earth in the other direction. Okay. Where you where you where people will try to uh, will will get screwed up is they'll say, well, look, this normal force and this gravitational force are equal and opposite. They're a force pair, F G P E and normal P E. They are not 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 a force pair. Well, yes, they are equal in magnitude. Yes, they are opposite in direction. But they're both forces that are acting on the person, on the person. They're not the same kind of force. They cannot be a force pair. All right, that's a tough one for a lot of people. But they are not a force pair.
force pairs have to be exerted on two different objects, by two different objects. Okay? Okay, so let's move along to uh, our hippo on a truck. We got a hippo here. Uh, we got a hippo on a truck, and it's driving east. Apparently, this way is east. And the truck slams on the brakes. All right, let's look at three body diagrams for each the hippo and the truck. Well, hippo has a gravitational force on the hippo exerted by the earth. There's a normal force exerted on the hippo by the truck. And if there weren't friction, yeah, if there weren't friction, and this truck was uh, slammed on the brakes, well, this hippo would want to maintain its constant velocity, all right, and so would relative to the back of the truck, as the truck tried to, or stops or slows down, the hippo would slide this way if there weren't friction. So for that reason, there's this frictional force that way exerted on the hippo by the truck. And that's it. There ain't no force that's pushing the hippo to the right, to the east. There was at some point to get it going east, but it's not there anymore. All right, so what about the truck? Well, we have a gravitational force on the truck by the Earth. We have a normal force on the truck by the Earth. The truck slams on the brakes. That means there's a frictional force on the truck by the Earth that's trying to make the truck accelerate to the left as it's moving to the right and thus slow it down. But, look, um, oh yeah, hippo on truck. Or no, no, sorry, on hippo by truck. On hippo by truck. That means that there are on truck by hippo. On truck by hippo. So this normal force on truck by hippo is the force pair partner with that one equal and opposite there is also a frictional force this way on truck by hippo the truck exerts a frictional force on the hippo to the left the hippo exerts a for frictional force on the truck to the right So here's a force pair, and here's a force pair. So if we're only talking about the truck hippo system, the force pairs are one, friction force, hippo truck, and friction force, truck hippo, and normal force, hippo truck, normal force, truck hippo. Okay? Oh, this one's a doozy. But let's look at this one. Oh, okay. Um, what I would like my people to do, let's forget about this, is Here's mass one and mass two pulled across frictionless ice by this tension force that acts on M2. You draw me a free body diagram for M2 and for M1, and then you identify the force pairs in this system. Okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, you thought I wasn't going to remember, but it did, but it did. Uh, is it here? Yeah, so what I, this is where I was, this is, yeah, this is the part that I really wanted to touch on for the, for the things that don't let me forget, like I don't let me forget. So, 
the big deal is that forced pair partners cannot be a weight and a normal. They are never part of a force. They are never partners in a forced pair because they're not the same kind of force and because they don't act on two different objects. Okay? All right, folks, that's a little bit about Newton's third law and about force pairs. All right. Adios.